Rings Mafia. Once one loses inspiration, he turns bizarre, or in this case, radical. We are now witnessing the increased radicalization of the so-called news networks. I'm making this video for those in my audience identifying with MGTOW because the black pills, we know this already, or at least we should know, so I'll be preaching to the choir. And the reason is I've been asked by some viewers to throw in my two cents regarding the appearance of Big John aka MGTOW is Freedom and Jerry Lou on CNN. In one of my early videos you can still find in my catalog, I've stated in no uncertain terms MGTOW needs to stay fuck out of mainstream media. YouTube unfortunately switched gears from broadcasting yourself into full-blown mainstream leftist SJW friendly media. You got presidential debates streaming live on here and it's only a matter of time before this kind of content gets totally banished. The so-called news networks have been dying animals since the death of Osama bin Laden. He was the last big topic these different news networks used to create their material. Now notice I've said create, not reporting, because they're in the business of propaganda rather than journalism. Propaganda appeals to your emotions, not common sense. Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda were the boogeyman they used to prop up their viewership through fear. Fake news ain't new phenomena, they've been eating off of it for decades. Now on the one hand, you got the left news networks like CNN and BBC throwing men under the bus, white men in particular, blaming and shaming them for pretty much everything under the sun, while on the other hand, you got networks like Fox News spewing open hatred and racism against anyone who isn't white or Christian. However, none of these networks ever say a critical word about Jews, which lets you know where all the roads lead to. The reason these news networks are doubling down on their message is because they know they're on their way out, and it's their last desperate attempt to stay afloat. They're basically throwing shit at the wall hoping it'll stick, perpetuating false narrative to their core audience. They've been losing viewership since the early 2000s and there's a reason why. Young people don't fuck with them. They spend more time on their smartphones, iPads and laptops than they do in front of a TV set and when they do, it's usually due to sports, reality TV, music videos and anything else under the sun except news. Young people ain't fucking with them. Netflix has more viewership than all they can put together. Case in point, Gillette anti-male commercial. It was a successful on TV, but it crashed and burned on the internet. As I'm recording this, I'm looking at it on the official Gillette page. 21,000 likes and 81,000 dislikes. Let it sink in for a moment. Television propaganda has no power online, they're on their ropes. Their audience is old and senile, young audience ain't buying it. We can go down a list, Emma Watson interview on the Entertainment Weekly, 7,000 likes, 21,000 dislikes. Heineken anti-male commercial got smashed so hard they had to take it down. Now let's talk leftist Hollywood for a second, Captain Marvel box office drop of 72% after the opening weekend. They are done. Demographics still watching the news are old, decrepit fossils who don't know how to use internet with the average age span over 70, who at some point in their lives were either Marxist, dope-smoking hippies or cross-burning KKKs and Nazis. You really need to look no further beyond sponsors advertising on these news networks. It's either cosmetics or pharmaceutical companies, life insurance, orthopedic appliances or nursery homes. That alone lets you know about their target audience. Furthermore, most of their commentators are old as fuck. Keith Olbermann is pushing 60, so does Laura Ingraham. Bill O'Reilly is 70, Bill Maher is 63, Rush Limbaugh is damn near 70, and Coulter is pushing 60. The youngest person on there is Raquel Maddow, and she's 45. She ain't no spring chicken either. See where I'm going with this? These assholes have been around since the 80s. People are fed up with them. Not to mention they're all draft dodgers. That's right, neither one of those so-called patriotic commentators ever served. 
you could catch them with a Millennium Falcon back in the day. I gotta give some credit though to the leftist media. If nothing else, they're trying to appeal to the younger audience, at least in their appearance, that is. While the right wing is totally, totally out of touch, Tucker Carlson wears a bow tie, checkered pants, and a hairdo from the 60s, while Laura Ingraham looks like she's fresh out of a Sunday church meeting. To their credit, they've tried to bring some face refreshments like Yamaka wearing Ben Shapiro. Problem is, he's so annoying you can tell he was repeatedly bullied at school. He reminds you of the guy that would rat on you to the school principal for making out with his sister. So that attempt failed, he didn't brought any new young viewers. As for the left, they keep pushing these over-the-wall dyke feminists that couldn't attract flies if they were dipped in shit, let alone young audience. TV has been propaganda mouthpiece of the system for so long, these guys thought they'll never go out of style. What they failed to see high up from their ivory towers is that the new technology is always adopted by the young people, not the old farts. It's the curiosity of the young mind that pushes technology forward. And they are slowly losing their grip. Their old and senile audience is already one foot in the grave, and soon they'll have no living audience. The internet is the new media. This is the place where the young generations are getting their info. It's the field of battle for the future young minds. There are channels on YouTube with larger viewership than these old news networks. I'm not even talking PewDiePie, I'm talking people with two, three hundred thousand viewers, recording with their laptops and smartphones. They need no five hundred thousand dollar cameras, they ain't renting big studios or paying these fat old cats for their commentaries, and yet they're kicking their ass in viewership. Internet and smartphones are game changers. MP3 killed the video star. Now remember, as MGTOW is picking up the momentum, younger audience will gravitate towards it. And I talked about it before, so don't say I didn't told you so. More young people will receive the message, and as audience grow, so will the Nawaltz claiming how they support MGTOW. They'll be doing the same thing women have been doing since the time immemorial. They'll seize every opportunity to jump on a male bandwagon and claim recognition. Nola Girl 504 is a great example. Look how mad she is because I've re-uploaded video by Victor Knight that she previously flagged down. Exposing her ass, she's been coming at it so hard it became the most viewed video on my channel with damn near 50,000 views. She's been begging for my attention ever since. She posted a bunch of comments from her different channels in the process exposing herself. I didn't really have to do all that much. And she's still preaching MGTOW message. Ask yourself this, where were all these women speaking out against gender bias laws back in the day? You could fight them with a magnifying glass and truth be told, many MGTOWs are blowjob away from the matrix. Hell, not even a blowjob. A pat on the shoulder would suffice for most of them. This is the reason why MGTOW needs to step back and reevaluate itself. More importantly, it needs to move from social to a political group. It needs to declare its list of demands and most importantly, vote with their wallets. This way, MGTA will succeed where MRA failed. The message should be, we ain't asking, we're demanding. And the list of demands needs to be concise and on point. If I was sitting in that CNN interview, I wouldn't be talking about male-female dynamic. To hell with that, that train left the station long time ago. I would be talking politics and the list of our demands and goals. That's it. I've got no demands from the system I want to see collapse under its own weight and then rebuild it on the black pill agenda. But if you're a MGTOW, you ought to start thinking strategically. Right now, MGTOW appears as a group of scorned men. This is why the system doesn't pay much attention to it, but if it turns into a political force to be reckoned with, you'll see how the narrative quickly changes. MGTOW needs to switch gears from reactive to proactive. Going your own way should also mean your own political way. John kept talking about hopes and dreams. You're not going to make things happen by dreaming about it. It needs to be a brand new day. 
it's time for tangibles and a direct talk. If a politician wants MGTOW votes, he better start talking mail and mail issues only, or else he needs keep moving. Every other politician out there is mouthful of female and LGBT rights. One more in the bucket makes no difference. Keep moving. You want MGTOW political support? You better start talking MGTOW. And trust me, you'll see all these leech in the walls jumping off of MGTOW ship as soon as the mans are in. That's how you separate wheat from chaff. MGTOW needs to change its narrative. It needs to be about power, not about women. Kicking women to the curb is a start, but it can't be end-all be-all. Power should be the ultimate goal, not getting even with women. Women are represented by the dying media, and as far as I'm concerned, they can keep it. Men need to focus on the new media. Internet needs to be in the service of our voice, and it's a battle we cannot afford to lose. This is Top Dollar, signing off. Thank <laughs> you.